Unleash the power within you and embark on a journey that will change your life forever. Join Garen Dem, a former corporate executive, as she unveils the unexpected twist that led her from a life of limitation to one of fulfillment and abundance. Brace yourself for a story that will inspire you to take the leap and find your own tale of entrepreneurship. Welcome to Biz Help For You, the show that saves you the expensive learning curve by providing advice from industry experts in every facet of the entrepreneurial journey. Too many small businesses collapse. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 20% fail within their first year, and less than 35% make it to their 10th anniversary. The goal of this podcast is to change that statistic. So if you're interested in learning more to be a successful entrepreneur, tune in today. Now, let me tell you a little bit about my guest today. Garen Dem is a business expert and strategist and is the founder of Garen Dem Consulting. She empowers entrepreneurs in pre-launch phase to five years in their business to monetize their passion with authenticity, integrity, and action towards their goals. She has several years of experience in training, development, and executive consulting within the entrepreneur and corporate leader space. As a business consultant, she's passionate about helping her clients advance personally and professionally. She has formally studied human behavior, finances, and human resources management. This has provided her with the unique insight and the skills to empower her clients and help them unlock their highest potential. So Garen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I am looking forward to this conversation and I have questions to ask you on the topic, of, of course. course, before we get into the actual subject matter, I'd love for you just to share a little bit more about your story and how you began working with entrepreneurs. Absolutely. So a little bit within my bio, you could probably tell I'm a former, you know, corporate ladder chasing executive. And personally, I realized it wasn't for me. I was being pigeon held a lot. I knew I was reaching a ceiling and it just, it just didn't fulfill me like, you know, anything in life should. So I decided to, you know, really dive deep into and look introspectively into myself and what I could do for myself as a business. And a lot of it is I did a lot of training and development and I love helping others. So I decided to do that as my business and help entrepreneurs. And in the beginning, I was helping a lot of people within the corporate space. And then, of course, you know, 2020 and life happened and, you know, everything changed for everybody and so it developed into not just those into the corporate leader space, but other people who just want to either make additional income, get out of their nine to five, whatever it may be, and start their own business and have that entrepreneurial dream, but don't know where to begin. Mm -hmm. Well, and what I read in the bio too, is you're mm -hmm. helping people from the time that they're launching, you know, for the first five years, which I also yeah. think is really important especially taking into consideration that during COVID, you know, some people lost their jobs. So they were kind of forced to actually start a business or right. some maybe had a passion and they kind of did it on the side, but a lot of people start their businesses without all the knowledge they need to be successful. And I've seen, you know, recent statistics that say 50% of those who were starting during the COVID period have failed in the first year, which is wow. tragic. Right. right. And so I love that you want to help the people who mm -hmm. are starting out up into kind of that first five years too, to give them the information that they need. So I'd love for you first to just talk about what do you think is one of the most important things that they need to understand when they are starting a business so that they can be successful and make it past that first year and the five years and ten, make it to 10 years at least. Make it a forever thing, right? So the one thing, the biggest thing, I think, is business mindset. I think it's the, the biggest thing. A lot of us didn't grow up in entrepreneurial <laughs> worlds. We didn't learn it in school. We didn't have, you know, a family that was entrepreneurial. And now we're getting into a space where this is the next thing for us to do. So we have to get into that mindset, that growth mindset, that abundance mindset, and understanding that we learn and grow every day. And 
it is something that we can do and it is a learned skill. Like sales is a learned skill and Mm -hmm. entrepreneurial is a learned skill. You're not just born with it. Right. And the other thing that ties into that is would you want to do this for the next five years? Mm -hmm. Don't necessarily follow the trends. Mm -hmm. You know, is it something that you are passionate about, like something that you're passionate about and you have the skills to do it or can learn the skills to do it and get paid for it and know that you can sustain it. So Mm -hmm. that's the first thing that we need to think about as entrepreneurs to find Mm -hmm. something that we can do and let it grow. Mm-hmm. And like I said, and love doing it because as entrepreneurs, you know, we work a lot of hours, often yeah. many more than, you know, if you were in a corporate job and that's not necessarily what we want to do forever. I mean, we started our business because we wanted freedom mm-hmm. or, you know, whether it was mm-hmm. freedom of time, freedom of resources, whatever that is. But I think understanding that it is going to take work up front, especially right. But I love, too, that you talk about don't follow the trends. I remember going yeah. to a conference once where someone was talking about that and saying, you might be looking at this saying, oh, this is like a hot business. I want to get into this now. You know, it's going to pay off. Mm-hmm. And you either maybe don't really love it. And so you really dislike going to work every day and yeah. doing all the things to be successful. But also it may just be a fad. And then in a few years, it's really not profitable. And so I love that you even touched on that is don't just follow the trends, like really think about what is it you want to do? And then you're going to have a higher likelihood of being successful. Oh, absolutely. So when people are looking at their performance as well, too, and having the mindset of even just being an entrepreneur, you know, Mm -hmm. we know that there's always things that we have to change in our business, you know, change with the times, change with technology, you know, different things too. So maybe do you have some tips on how they can analyze their businesses and see what maybe should be the first thing that they're making a change in and how should they go about making those changes? Yeah. I always say that to follow your data and your marketing. So always do market research. You can't just do market research in the beginning of your business Mm -hmm. and go, okay, this is what my audience is. And this is what my audience wants. And this is what I'm going to do. It's all about adaptability. And um, it's not necessarily like we said, like, don't follow the trends, but Mm -hmm. you know, if you're, if social media, certain things are, you know, more relevant than others, you know, you can do a little bit Your whole entire business might not follow the trend. However, Mm -hmm. your marketing can follow the trend. Mm -hmm. And you always start like going to your target audience and asking them, what is it you're looking for? What can I help Mm -hmm. you with? What is it that you're wanting or what is it that you're wanting to see? And it is more client focused. But with an online business and a lot of entrepreneurs are now online. Your, your clients are online, your customers are online. So you have to understand what they are wanting, what they are doing, what they are needing, and then you adapt and grow with that. Mm-hmm. So just look at your data and see what it says and grow with that. And I agree in terms of following the trends, like for marketing or something like that too. Yeah. If there's a hot topic right now too, and your Mm -hmm. industry is perfectly aligned with that and you can incorporate that into your message. I think that is a smart thing to do. I was just talking about like trends in terms of like, don't go into a yogurt shop for your uh, business if you don't want to have to be doing that all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you're talking about data and understanding what that is and looking at it, a lot of people Mm -hmm. maybe don't even understand what you mean in terms of that. So like, can you tell them like what types of things should be monitored in the business to make sure they're doing what they should be to be successful? Oh, absolutely. Certain things that you can monitor is, well, let's say it's social media and you're putting out your content on social media and your You can go into analytics on all of these social media pages and see where are these people watching from? Are they clicking any of your links? Where are they clicking? If you do have a website or you do use any third party, they usually have a dashboard where you can look at these analytics as to the age range, 
probably the gender of where these people of that are watching and clicking and all of those fun things, what are they doing? And then you can see what country they are in, what they like better, like what performed better mm -hmm. in your marketing and what didn't. And then you could, could go more into depth in that way to say like, all right, if people are liking, you know, more of me storytelling instead of me being, you know, very executive like or business like and they like my storytelling a little bit better than maybe I could gear towards more and doing more storytelling type stuff. Mm -hmm. So it is mostly within that analytics and seeing where are they from, what are they clicking, what how long are they watching? Like if you have something that's 10, 15 minutes and you're you know you're telling and you're selling your stuff at the end of it, but people are really watching only the first two, three minutes. Mm -hmm. Then you got to change up a little, you know, mm -hmm. tell yeah, your hook, important. then say, Hey, you want more info? Follow me. Or you want more info? Watch till the end kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. then you can see, so you have to like, there's always where it says insights or like view insights right. or view analytics and stuff like that within your platforms. Mm -hmm. Well, and as someone, and even reading in your bio, you know, you have history with finances as well too. So mm -hmm. as someone coming from financial aspect too, I always like to recommend to the clients, watch your profit, watch your revenue, yes. watch, you know, your cash flow, you know, because a lot of people, they just look at that top line revenue too and think, oh, my numbers are growing. But it's like, well, are you making money off that? Right? Are right. you going to have the cash flow that you need to pay your bills? You know, I think those are right. also important metrics to follow. Um, yes. but there's so many things, right, as business owners that we can pick that are important for our mm -hmm. success and monitoring them. I think like you're saying, the main thing is pay attention to what you have and then make those adjustments as needed. Right. Absolutely. Right. And yes, finances is a big thing. It's a, it's another thing Like business finance is very different than your personal finance and you, and the vanity metrics, isn't the only thing, mm -hmm. like you said, is this making you money. And if it isn't, you have to then go into all of your analytics and say, okay, why isn't it making me money? And mm -hmm. how, what can I do to change so I can make that money? <laughs> because that's right. what we want to do at the end of the day, right? We want to make additional income mm -hmm. and what this is what we're doing it for. And eventually possibly turn it into our full-time income, whatever it mm -hmm. may be for everybody individually. But mm -hmm. we af absolutely have to dive deep within our business and not just like, you know, throw out content, 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 and hope somebody bites. Right. Well, and of course, making improvements is, in our business is important too, as we go along and we're mm -hmm. learning from mistakes or, you know, maybe there's yes. even mistakes we don't have to make because we learn from someone else. But mm -hmm. how would you educate those who are listening to really focus on making those changes and how do they go about doing that? I guess it's, it's, it's watching what you are doing and certain mistakes. Like I've made plenty of mistakes where sometimes I would really care about spelling errors or grammatical errors and things like that. And the, so those things at the end of the day don't matter. Sometimes I would laugh at it or I would comment myself and be like, ha ha ha, you caught it. That means you're really paying attention. Like I would mm -hmm. make it into a joke at the end of the day, but then I'd be like, all right, people are paying attention. So really I have to pay attention to my spelling errors. Mm -hmm. So it's really looking introspectively and having that mindset to be like, okay, it's nothing personal. It is a business and your audience is watching and it's best that like, take it into like, they're watching you. Mm -hmm. They are mm -hmm. actually paying attention and they're pointing things out to you. Someone the other day pointed out something that I was, you know, reading. I have a teleprompter app and I was reading from the teleprompter and they're like, we can tell that you're reading. And I'm like, oh, OK, I can't memorize all this, but all right, we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's OK. Let them at least they're paying attention. Right. At least they're engaging with me. And we have to take it in stride and take it into a more positive reaction instead of a negative one. I think that would be the first step and not take it personally and go, okay, now I know, now I've learned and let me research and let me go back to it. And let me, let me ask my audience the question mm -hmm. of what it is. And is it really that important? 
is the is my message there like are you just listening or are you watching me does it matter if i have makeup on does it matter if i'm dancing does it matter if whatever it is and then take it from there and then when it comes to that change it is gradual nothing happens overnight so you mm -hmm. just have to be in that mindset of growth mindset and understand that your business is all about sustainability and adaptability and you have to grow with it mm -hmm. so if someone's listening right now too mm -hmm. and they're thinking starting a business or maybe they've just started in the last few months and they sure. want to you know start it off to be successful doing everything that they're supposed to what are the tips that you would give to help them really start it on the right track it does actually depend on their business but it does the few things that i want to i guess let the listeners know is what is the best platform for mm -hmm your product or your niche or whatever it may be um, you don't have to be on everything choose one learn about it and do the things like to market yourself and market yourself with authenticity market mm -hmm. yourself with some integrity and just be yourself and do what you think is best for your business what you think is best for your brand for yourself you don't have to show your face you can always do things depending if, if, you know, if you're a consultant, yes, show your face. But if you're, you know, selling a product, you can always just show that product and just have that product and show your audience and interact with your audience would be the first thing. And, and understand that you, you can analyze everything from the beginning see where your audience is, see what they're liking and they're not liking and go from there and start growing from there. Mm -hmm. Also, I would suggest joining other groups or having mentors or, you know, getting courses or whatever it may be to learn. Because as much as we love to dive in and be like, all right, I'm going to do this at the end of the day, Every single one of us are learning and growing every day. I learn and grow mm -hmm. every day. I don't, I don't have all the answers all the time. Mm -hmm. So joining communities as well and getting feedback with everything is also a great thing to do for your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Is especially I've been in like mastermind groups for probably, mm -hmm. I don't know, 10 or 11 years even. You know, mm -hmm. there's a core us that have been in there all that time. And then some people kind of come and go, but I think that's especially yeah. helpful too, because you can put out there, like I have this challenge and you can brainstorm together and like come up with solutions mm -hmm. or even just have the support of other entrepreneurs, right. especially if you don't have other entrepreneurs around you. Mm -hmm. I think that's super important to really have that. And it also brings about accountability because sometimes we're in the midst of it and we're like, oh, I just don't want to do this any longer. Right. But right. if someone is holding you to like, yeah. well, you said you had this goal. And yeah. so I'm going to challenge you, you know, to keep on keeping on. And so yes. I do think that that is important as well. So I'm glad that you touched on that too. And mm -hmm. mentorship, that's amazing too, especially if you could find someone who's even in your industry who can mm -hmm. give you some of those stories too. Like, this is what I did. These are the mistakes I made and they're willing to share. I think right. that's especially helpful too. So I'm glad that you like brought up those tips too, because I think that's really important. Yeah. And you talked about like monetizing your passion in the information you provided to us. So I'd love for you to talk on that. Like, what do you mean by monetizing your passion? I mean, it sounds like it makes sense, right? But what does it really mean to you? Well, it is, I touched on it a little bit. It's what do you love to do? Mm -hmm. What do you like, what you wake up and what do you think about you think, or what do you love to do? And you can see yourself doing for a long time. Like mm -hmm. if it is like you love dogs, for instance, mm -hmm. and you love animals, like, would you want to do that? Would you want to pet dogs all day long? And mm -hmm. I would love to pet dogs all day long. And if you want to do something like that, um, how can you turn that into a business and how to monetize that and how can we get that into making an income for ourselves because mm -hmm. at the end of the day life is too short for us to wake up and dread going into somewhere right. where 
you know, eight hours a day, or I'd rather work 16 hours. Like we said before, we work longer hours for our business, but I'd rather work 16 hours for myself. I'd rather mm -hmm. make that for myself and have that to eventually have that time freedom to have that financial freedom. So what are you passionate about? And ask the question of, do I really want to do this in the next five years? Do I mm -hmm. really care about this? Can I learn more about this and talk about this all the time? Can I get on other platforms and talk about it? And think of that and if that can be done for you, for your life. And how can you make money off of it? How can we mm -hmm. monetize that passion? And it's not just about money. It's about really fulfilling your desire, mm -hmm. your life desire, your your wants, your needs. It's not just money at the end of the day. It is to have a, take a three-month vacation if you want. Spend more time with your family. Spend more time with your fur babies, you know. Do you want to sit and watch TV all day? You can. Whatever it may be, you absolutely can do it because you're living a life with fulfillment. Right. And a lot of people do what they're doing because they also want to make a difference in the world, right? And so <laughs> having the opportunity to use your business to make an impact is really important, you know, as well to many it's of us. And it doesn't even have to be something that you've done in the past. I think a lot of times people think, well, oh, this was what I did for my career. So now I'm just going to do it as a business, but mm -hmm. they might have a hobby that they really love yeah. that they could also turn into a business. And so I think looking at everything that you enjoy, like you were saying, mm -hmm. and can I turn in to a business? One of these things that I really just enjoy doing, right. and, you know, that that's happened to a lot of people. Right. So it doesn't necessarily have to yeah. be what you've done for work before. Of course. Yeah. And sometimes we do get into work because it's a job and we're mm -hmm. there and we're making money and we like that job security behind it. And we may not want to do it forever. And mm -hmm. that's what you have to look at. Like, what is it? Do you love cooking? Do you love, you know, making fashion or jewelry? Or do you, like I said, like, do you like, animals do anything anything there's a million things out there and it isn't saturated there is room for everybody mm -hmm. you have something unique to bring and there is room for you the world needs what you have to offer it's just mm -hmm. about marketing yourself the right way and right. you can get there exactly is there anything else that you would like to share, like tips or tricks, uh, something I didn't think to ask you on this topic that you think would be helpful for that newer entrepreneur? The only thing that I would like to share, besides everything that we've talked about, is to remember that the magic that you are seeking is in the work that you're not doing. Mm. That, I think, is one of the best quotes that I have recently come across, and it is that we will learn and grow every day, and we have to get out of that comfort zone. I know that a lot of us, especially, you know, after we said COVID, after all of that craziness that happened, we've come to realize that life is too short. Things can turn uh, like crazy overnight. And a lot of things can be unknown, but we have to take control of our own life, take that responsibility, manifest our own destiny and get out of our comfort zone and take ourselves to that next level. Mm -hmm. But getting out of that comfort zone sometimes is difficult. Not easy. <laughs> not <know>. easy. Absolutely <laughs> not easy. Uh, trust me, mm -hmm. I'm in there as well, where I'm like, oh, goodness, I have to take myself over there and do something different that I've never done before. However, mm -hmm. that's where the magic is. That's mm -hmm. where you're going to see, you're going to meet new people. You're going to learn new things. You, you're going to get new clients. You're going to do all of the things that you are wanting to do mm -hmm. is in that next space. Right. Perfect. Well, I would love to ask if you have any offers that you would like to share with our listeners and how can they connect with you if they want more information? 
Yes, absolutely. So if they want anything more, they can go to my website, which is garendem.com. Or you can follow me on Instagram. I'm more on Instagram than anything, which is uh, garen.dem with that Instagram handle. And I do have a course bundle, which is the business growth accelerator course bundle, which is pretty much like a business one-on-one. So it business 101. And I used to do one-on-one and it is like that through the courses where I'm teaching you about business mindset, how to start and scale your business and how to create your own course as well. Perfect. And do you want to spell your name just in case anyone's listening and they want to go and they're not sure how to spell it? Absolutely. I know my name is very unique. So it is Garen, G-A-R-I-N, and last name is Dem, D-E-M. Perfect. Well, Garen, thank you so much for being a guest on my show and talking on this topic with me. I'm sure entrepreneurs who are listening found what you shared helpful, especially those who are thinking of launching or recently launched, so they can apply that to their business and just jumpstart their success. So thank you. Thank you. It was great to be here. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in today. I hope you found this topic interesting and enjoyed the informative discussion. Would you please share my show with those you know and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform? I'd really appreciate your support. If you have any additional questions or comments, be sure to reach out to my guest at any of the links that they shared, or you could send me a message at media at abandp.com. I hope you can join me for my next interview. And remember, you can connect with me on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And my website is abandp.com. This episode is sponsored by Affordable Bookkeeping and Payroll Services. If you are overwhelmed trying to handle the financial aspects of your business, ABNP is here to help. Contact us today to discuss your needs at 310-534-5577 or contact at abandp.com. My team and I are eager to assist you. Until next time, have a great day. Thank you for listening to Biz Help For You. Please join your host, Candy Messer, again next time. Have a terrific day.